Hello and welcome to my morning note. You might have noticed that there's been quite a lot of bad news around at the moment. The latest bad news here in the UK is that uh, GDP growth on an annual basis has dropped down to minus 0.7%. That's much worse than people expected. Uh, and if you really want a cheerful little stat, every time over the last 50 years that growth has dropped that far, it has always fallen further before getting better again. So the UK economy seems to have reached stall speed. However, for the Eurozone as a whole, the mood today has been very optimistic. Uh, and apparently that is because uh, of uh, a story during the rounds that uh, Mr. Nowotny, of the, uh, the uh, Austrian member of the uh, uh, ECB's board is saying that there may be some arguments in favour of allowing uh, the ESM to have a banking licence. If that doesn't sound like reason for great rejoicing, uh, perhaps it is. And here to explain why the market has responded in the way it has is our uh, market commentator, Jamie Chisholm. Jamie, w what actually happened in the market this morning on this, this Nowotny news? OK, well, at, at about 8 o'clock, just as uh, Europe was about to open, things were mm. looking quite grim. We had the Apple results out overnight, which everyone likes. The, an Apple a day normally makes the market sure. uh, very happy. I know yeah. that's been used many times before, I apologise. Yes. Um, but um, it, it looked like things were going to be quite positive because the Apple's mm. results missed. Mm. Uh, we had, uh, we've had a rash of bad economic data, more worries about uh, Spain, etc. However, just before the market opened, we had news in the wires from Bloomberg that said uh, Mr. Nowotny, as, as you mentioned, mm. uh, was discussing the possibility that the ESM, the permanent bailout fund, could get a licence, which in theory means they can go to the ECB, borrow as much money as they want. They therefore can always bail out almost anyone, no matter what. But doesn't this show incredible hypersensitivity to... The policy front. I mean, as I could see it, he was thinking out loud. He said there were arguments for it, but he also said in the same piece that there were arguments against. Exactly. And he, he additionally said that as far as he, he, was, he was aware, there was no great discussion going on in the ECB about this at the moment. So in a nutshell, he's not actually said anything new. But what it does show, as you're, you quite rightly mentioned, is the intense, the hypersensitivity to investors of the chance that there might be some sort of pos policy resolution to the Eurozone crisis. And there are a lot of people here who are desperate not to miss the next leg up in the market. So yeah. straight away we had a bit of a rise. And let's keep this in perspective. Mm. The markets did not go ballistic. OK, let's take, a look at, uh, let's take a look at exactly how ugly it was before this morning. This chart's now a few hours out of date. But two-year bond yields for, uh, on Spain uh, at uh, a Eurozone record. Eurozone banks index actually managing to fall below its nadir from 09. Yes. I mean, presumably, with sentiment this negative, it doesn't take much to get some kind of a, of a bounce. Well, exactly. And the, the, the word going, or the, the, the tone of the market just prior to the open, as I had mentioned earlier, was that you know, something has to happen because at about 7.50, when uh, just not long after the uh, peripheral bond markets were in play and were trading, mm. um, Spanish two-year yields went above 7%. The, the curve flattened markedly, and when that happens, it's usually a signal that it's pretty much the end game in terms of whether a company can borrow on the short term or not. The last time we saw this sort of thing with Greece, Italy, uh, sorry, Greece, Ireland, and Portugal, bailouts were imminent. But plainly, we were braced for a big political event. Yeah. Let's very quickly take a look at put this into a much broader perspective. Despite the earnings season not being all that exciting so far, one thing continues to be there to go strong, which is that people are going short the U short Europe and long the US, and it continues to work. How long can this possibly carry on? Well, there's been there's been more debate about this um, in the market recently. Actually, I, mm. I, I did a piece on the Trading Post mm. in today's paper. That's uh, Wednesday's paper. Mm. Um, which says a call for Morgan Stanley, which says emerging markets, as well as Europe, which has been underperforming relative to the S&P, mm. um, they're likely to relatively outperform because um, people have gone too um, long in the US, based primarily on the fact that um, people like what they know. The right. big solid talk in the market now that um, if things were showing any sort of sign of improvement, then the relative valuations would, con would crunch and then the US would perhaps underperform. OK, Jamie, thank you very much indeed. A lot of stuff going on, uh, if you want one summation from it. We really are braced for disaster. If you are prepared to bet that that disaster isn't going to happen, then there's probably a case to bet for Europe and against the US.